we're going to be walking through how you can build a free full CI CD pipeline for deploying your code to an AWS Lambda function and we'll get started. So this is something that took me a long time to figure out. So basically I scripted the resources into Terraform files so you guys can modify these appropriately and then run them to provision the S3 bucket, the IAM role, the IAM policy, the IAM user uh, that I'm using in order to make this thing work. And I'll walk you guys through basically the process of how this whole thing runs right now. So um, right now, this is my GitLab repo. And so if I go into here and I view my main.py file, you can see that this is the exact same file that uh, this Lambda called test Lambda in my AWS account is running. And so if I wanted to go in here and make some kind of code change, I would do that by, I'm gonna do this inside of the GitLab uh, web IDE, um, but I'm just gonna go in here and you know change this to something like hello world. And then I'm going to uh, commit this change and we'll push this to the master or main branch and we'll go back to our project. Um, and so basically what's happening right now is that it's running through the uh, pipeline. So what is going on in the back end is inside of our GitLab CI YAML file, um, I've defined this job. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm using the uh, AWS image that uh, GitLab has for the runner and I'm zipping the contents of that main.py file. And then um, once I do that, I am going to be running the uh, S3 sync operation to push the build artifact to Lambda. And then once the build artifact uh, is in the S3 bucket, I'm going to then run uh, a Lambda update function code command in order to tell Lambda to grab whatever is at that new S3 bucket and then um, move it into that pipeline uh, or move it into the, the actual function for the new source code. So um, all the moving pieces here are defined inside of these Terraform files. So we've got this im.tf file where we're creating that im user. And uh, I call this one the Lambda artifact handler and its job is to basically uh, work between S3 and Lambda. Um, obviously this is not production ready because you want to follow principle of least privilege, but for the sake of a demo, um, this is what I'm doing. Um, so this IAM user basically is what uh, the GitLab runner is using to update that to run that update Lambda function code, as well as to sync between the local storage in that GitLab environment, the runner, uh, and the S3 bucket. Um, and then, so that's what this guy's doing. We've got our lambda.terraform file right here. Uh, this guy uh, is basically defining the execution rules so that our Lambda function can run. We are also defining the actual Lambda function itself right here. Um, and you know, you give it a function name. And in this case, when Terraform is provisioning a Lambda function, you have to give it a file of the source code that it's going to be running. So in my case, I'm gonna be saying that I have a Python 3.9 runtime, so I need to give it uh, some Python scripts. And so in my case, what I did is, um, you know, that's what's in main.py, but we've just put this into that S3 bucket and uh, we've got that key for it. So um, basically uh, I'm referencing the S3 bucket that Terraform creates because Terraform is great in the sense that it creates these resources in the correct order for me. So it can't make the Lambda function until the S3 bucket exists. Um, and then in addition to that, the first time you set this thing up, you're going to also need to update or upload, sorry, a key to that uh, bucket. And so the key in my case is uh, this lambda artifacts forward slash lambda artifact dot zip. That is purely just a zip of this main.py file. But as you get more nuanced, you can include the dependencies uh, for this. And we'll do a little follow up on that with, you know, including something like pandas or fast API or flask. You can do all that stuff uh, inside of here. Um, but, you know, for the sake of this very simple example, we're just going to have one file inside of that zip. Uh, and then we're also telling the Lambda function what is its execution role, and then the handler right here is telling it that basically to Lambda, once you finish unzipping the contents of that S3 object, um, there's going to be a, a file called main.py, so that's what main corresponds to, and then inside of main.py, uh, there's going to be that Lambda handler function. So basically, this is what Lambda is going to be trying to find. If you don't define these things correctly, it will air out on you, um, but that's what's going on there. Provider.tf uh, is just telling it that we're using AWS and that I'm going to be deploying all these resources in US East 1. Um, and then we've also got a remote.tf. And this is so that um, one Terraform is running and trying to figure out what is the current state and what is the desired state for your uh, for your architecture, for your resources. 
um, it's going to be saving the current state, that .tf state file, into an S3 bucket that I have also created previously. And that's just to keep these things as server serverless as possible for me. Um, and then finally, we've got our S3 bucket uh, definition right here. And I've just called this VS Lambda Artifacts. These do need to have unique names, so you will need to change this um, as you guys go on. Um, but you know, give it something unique. Um, and this is just a policy to help protect the S3 bucket itself so that it doesn't get abused by people. Um, but after we do all this stuff, um, we can see that our pipeline right here should be finished if I refresh this guy. We can see that it just did. So it's um, just running through all the stuff that we were just talking about in terms of um, basically zipping all those artifacts. So it's making the directory called Lambda Artifacts and that's only inside of the runner environment. It doesn't do that inside of the project repo. Um, and then it adds main into that. So then we've got that zip file. And then um, I just echo it just so I can see it for debugging. But um, once it does that, it then syncs the directory called Lambda Artifacts. So everything inside that directory uh, to the S3 bucket um, and that key. And then once it does that and it finishes that upload, then it proceeds to then update that Lambda function code. And the reason why we do all this stuff at the end of the day is so that our Lambda function right here when we refresh this guy, um, is going to have that new data in it that uh, we just gave it. So um, you can see that it's updated, and that is our full CI CD pipeline for Lambda. And I'm doing this in GitLab because GitLab gives you 400 minutes of uh, free runner time per month. So that's how you basically create these pipelines in the first place inside of that GitLab uh, CI.yaml file. So hope this is helpful stuff. This took me a long time to figure out. Um, that's why I'm sharing it with you guys, so hopefully it saves you some time. Um, but yeah, thank you again for watching, and be well.